Hi class, today we are going to be talking about congruent shortcuts. Um, so the congruent shortcuts are when we're trying to look at two different triangles and see if they are congruent. So for our first one, we're going to look at the triangle congruency. So two triangles are congruent if their corresponding sides and their corresponding angles are congruent. So what that means, if I have my blue triangle and I know that this angle is congruent to this angle of my brown triangle, and this angle is congruent to this one in the corresponding location, and then I have my third angle here is congruent to this one, which corresponds. So we'd say these angles correspond to each other and they're congruent. And also, so they're corresponding sides and they're congruent angles, so these corresponding sides. So this side is between the two angles, and this side is between these two angles, specifically the angle with one marking and two marking, the side between them. And then also this side, which is the side between the angles with two markings and three markings. So they are the corresponding sides. And then the third side is also congruent to the third side. So then I would say that these two triangles are congruent. So we know that two triangles, so my blue one and my brown one, are congruent if we know that all the sides and all the angles are congruent. But there's actually some congruent shortcuts. So congruent shortcuts is if I have side, 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 so SSS is the abbreviation we're going to use. So if I have three sides are congruent in my triangle, then I know that these two triangles must be congruent. I don't even need to know about the angles, just as long as I know that this side is congruent to this side, and then this side, which corresponds to this one, is congruent, and this side here is congruent to this side here. So then I have three sides of one triangle is congruent to three sides of the other triangle. So then I know that these two triangles are congruent. Um, so I don't have to know about all of the angles. The next congruent shortcut we have is side angle side. So this means if we have an angle that is between the two sides, that are congruent, then we know that the triangles are congruent. So if I have two separate triangles, and if I know that this side is congruent to this side, and then an angle, so say this angle is congruent to this angle, and then another side such that the angle is sandwiched between the two sides. So a side, an angle, and then immediately after I have another angle. And they're corresponding, so I have my side and then an angle and then a side. And it's really, really important that we go in order. And I can go um, clockwise, side, angle, side, or I can go counterclockwise, side, angle, side. It still reads the same. So if I know that this side is congruent to this side, and this angle is congruent to that angle, and this side is congruent to that angle, then I have the side, angle, side property, and then I know, because I have the shortcut, that these two triangles are congruent. And I don't need to know that every single angle and every single side is congruent. It is enough to have the side angle side shortcut to know that they are congruent. So we have another congruent. It's very similar, but it's kind of opposite. We have an angle, oops, part, the angle, then the side, and then another angle. So we have two angles with the side between the two angles are congruent. So if I have an angle is congruent to this angle, and then a side is congruent to this side, and then another angle immediately after it. So the side is completely between the two angles. See how my sides is completely between my two angles. And then this would be angle, side, angle. And we read them in order. We can either go um, from left to right, or right to left, or clockwise or counterclockwise, side, angle, side, or side, ang or sorry, angle, side, angle, or backwards, angle, side, angle, as long as the side is between the two angles, just like it's written with the side is between the two angles. So if I have this shortcut, then I know my two triangles are congruent. The next one is angle, angle, side, AAS. So you have two angles, and then after the two angles, you have a side. So I have an angle, it's congruent to an angle, and then another angle, and then another angle, and then after my two angles, the next side. So after my two angles, the next side. Okay, now this would also be true if I went the other way. So instead of putting that side there, if I chose to go the other way and look at the angle. If I have an angle is congruent to that angle, and then the next angle is congruent to that angle, and then after that, a side. So you can read it side, angle, angle, 
or angle, angle, side. Just as long as you have two angles and then a side, or a side and then two angles. So if you have angle, angle, side, then you know that these two triangles are congruent by giving just those three bits of information. Then you can show that the two triangles are congruent. The next one is hypotenuse-like, and this has to do specifically with only right triangles. So if you have a right triangle and you know that the hypotenuse of these two right triangles are congruent in one of the legs, so one of the other sides. So if you have this scenario, so in a hypotenuse and a leg of a right triangle, so of course you know those 90 degree angles are also congruent in this hypotenuse leg conjecture, then we know that these two triangles must be congruent. And so that's another shortcut. And that's the last shortcut that we have. So if we want to show that two triangles are congruent, we can use the shortcuts hypotenuse leg angle, angle, side, angle, side, angle, side, 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 and side, angle, side. So those were the shortcuts. So let's do some example problems. Example one says, name the conjecture that leads to each congruence. So triangle PAT, so we look at it in order, PAT is congruent to triangle IMT. So how do we know that those two are congruent? Well, this tells me that P is congruent to I, and A is congruent to M, and then of course T is congruent to T of the two triangles. So which conjecture can we use? Well, looking at this, I know that this angle here is congruent to that angle because those are vertical angles. So I know those are congruent. And I have markings that show that AP or PA is congruent to IM here. And they are in corresponding locations of how we wrote the triangles, which is important that they correspond. Okay, so I have a side and an angle are congruent. But I also have markings that these two are parallel. So if I go ahead and highlight these two parallel lines, we're going to use one of our conjectures from the previous times, that if you have two parallel lines and we cut it by a transversal here, then we have all of those special angles that are congruent. And we're often going to see um, alternate interior angles. So if I go from my parallel to my transversal and follow my transversal and go to the alternate side of it, to my parallel, then I have these two are alternate interior angles, and I know that those two are congruent because of AIA, or alternate interior angles. So now when I'm looking at my triangle, I have a side and an angle and an angle. And side angle angle, or angle angle side, is one way to show that two triangles are congruent. So we can say that they are congruent by angle angle side. So it says, name the conjecture that leads to each congruence. Now, we can also do it another way. If I look at uh, my vertical angles and my parallel lines and this transversal instead, I can look at um, between my transversal and my parallel. I have this angle and then follow my transversal to the parallel and go on the alternate side. I could say that those two angles are congruent by alternate interior angles and this would be side, angle, angle. So we can look at it multiple ways, side, angle, angle, or angle, angle, side. Okay, so the next example says triangle SID is congruent to triangle JAN. And by looking at the triangles, how do we know that those two triangles are congruent? So what shortcut are we going to use? Well, I have SD, so SD, that side, is 6. And my one that's 6 is NJ, which is this one. So those match up. And then my 8 side is SI, so SI. Well, that's in the same corresponding spot as JA, and JA is also 8. And the last one is 9, which is ID. So if I look at ID, that corresponds to AN, and AN is also 9. So here I have these three sides corresponds to those three sides. So I have side, side, side is my triangle congruence. That tells me that these two triangles are congruent. 
Okay, so in example two, we want to see, can we make a conclusion? So we're told that kite is a kite with ki, so this side is congruent to ti, that side. So I want to see, can I say that triangle kie, so this triangle here, is it congruent to another one? And if so, is it? Is it tie? Is it eit? Eti? So we need to make sure we get them corresponding to write them um, properly. Well, I see that this side IE is the same in the top triangle and in the bottom triangle. So I know that those are also congruent to each other. Um, and then I also know that since it's a kite, I know that TE must be congruent to KE because um, a kite has two pairs of congruent sides. Okay, so now I have three sides of this triangle congruent to three sides of that triangle. And if I start with K and then go to I, I'm going from KI over the, the triangle with one line. So in my other triangle, I have to go similarly, go from one line, KI, and towards the one with two. So here I'm going over the side with one dash towards the side with two dashes. So it's going to be TIE, T. -I -E, T I, E, and that's true by side, side, side. And you can check to make sure it matches up. K, I, and T, I are congruent, and I, E is congruent to I, E, and then is E, K congruent to T, K. E, K, and T, K have three markings, so that is correct. So we can make a conclusion, it's that those two triangles are congruent, and then it's by the side, side, side conjecture. So for our next example, I want to see if triangle SQR can be congruent to any of these things. And I do have two sides are congruent, and those two sides are congruent. And then again, I see my vertical angles here, so I know those are congruent. And if I read these in order, I have a side, and then a side, and then an angle. So that's side, side, angle. And if I read it the other way, I have angle, side, side. And that is not a triangle congruence. So that is not a one. And if you read it backwards, there's reason. It's not okay to write that. I wouldn't be lecturing about it, and they're not congruent. So it's one way to remember that it's not congruent by looking at it. Nope, not a good word to write. So can we make a conclusion? No, we don't know that they're congruent because we don't have one of the shortcuts to show that they're congruent. We do have side side angle, but that's not one of the shortcuts we went through. Okay, so now we're going to look at triangle ACN, which I'm going to highlight ACN in yellow. So ACN has the right triangle at angle C, and I see that I have another right triangle at R. So in the middle, I'm going to have an R. And in this yellow triangle here, I have this angle here, A. And in my other triangle, which is going to be this one out here, my angle A is congruent to my red triangle's angle N. So my A of my yellow is going to be my N of my other. So then what is my other angle of my red triangle? I have N, R, A. Okay, so I have N, R, A is going to be congruent to A, C, N, and we have to look at Y. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull out my red triangle and draw it separate. So I pulled out my red triangle, and I'm going to do the same thing with my yellow triangle, CAMP. And for both of these triangles, I, they both contain the side AN, so AN is congruent to AN, and seeing that they're both on the outside, that also holds true. And so I have an angle, and then an angle, and then a side. So by angle, angle, side, I know that these two are congruent. And remember, we have to go in order. I can't go angle, skip a side, skip an angle, and go to this side. That's not okay. You have to go in order angle, angle, side. The shortest distance around is congruent to um, the other triangle. Okay, here we are in example five. And in example five, we're told that PS, this middle line here, is the angle bisector of QPR. So P is in the middle, so it's bisecting this angle here. So I have two triangles. I have this upper right triangle, and then I know this lower one is a right triangle. I know that this also needs to be a right triangle. So in my lower triangle, I have this angle, and then I know that this side is going to be congruent to the side in the above triangle, and then I have a 90 degree angle. So I have an angle, and then a side, and then an angle. So I know I'm looking at angle, side, angle, because I have the two triangles. 
and I, when I pull them apart, I can see the two triangles, and I see that the Q corresponds to the R, and I see the P are in the same locations, and I see that S is the congruent 90 degrees. So my S's match up, my Q and the R are kind of the ones without any marking, so we know they're congruent, and that's all.